Now let's get on to something that's a little bit more complex. Now, um, a lot of you are like, okay, this isn't so bad. Uh, I want to see how it gets harder. This is how it gets harder. People always want to know the twist. Where's the trick, Mr. Siegel? Well, here's your trick, okay? Here's where it gets tougher. How to predict the products of reaction. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the reactants, and you have to identify the products. The easiest way to do this and people always argue with me, but I'm right every time. The easiest way to do this is figure out what type of reaction it is first. Because if you can say, oh, it's composition, well, then you know that you should only have one product, okay? Or if it's decomposition, I'm sorry, if it's a combustion you know, and it's a hydrocarbon, you know that your products have to be CO2 and H2O. So figure out what type of reaction it is first. Second, Write down what you think should be the products. Third, balance the charges, meaning inside of the compound. So if you see it as, you know, um, KBr, okay, potassium, we write KBr, which is potassium bromide, we write KBr. And we know potassium is plus one, bromine is minus one, just like we did on the other example. So, that should cover you for predicting reaction. Now let's do it this way. Here's an example. Iron plus copper 2 chloride. Fe plus CuCl2. Well, the first thing I do is I say, what type of reaction is this? Well, I have a single substance plus a compound. Therefore, it is single replacement. Okay. So which two things are going to switch? Because this is the most important part about the single replacements, is which things are going to switch places. Well, if I look at my important ions to know, I see that iron is typically plus three. Okay, well, which of these two is the positive? Well, chlorine is minus one because it's on the right-hand side of the periodic table. Copper, therefore, must be plot positive. So the iron and the copper are going to switch. So my expected products will have iron with chlorine and copper by itself. The iron is typically plus three. Chlorine is minus one, so I balance my charges. So I get FeCl3. Make sure, check to make sure their charges balance, and that's the correct reaction. And again, when I'm all done, I double check that it makes sense based on my original assumption. A single replacement reaction should have a single thing plus a compound yields a compound plus a single thing. And that's what I've got. Now let's see a different example. Okay, I look at this and I say compound plus compound must be, that's right, double replacement. So double replacement means the first things switch places. So I'm going to get Cu with the OH, Na with the SO4. Copper is typically plus 2. Hydroxide we know is minus 1. Well, Okay, I put the hydroxide in parentheses and draw the two. Notice how I scratch out my charges when I'm all done? Please make sure you do that. Otherwise, it is wrong. Because once the things are in a compound, there is no charge. So my two comes down from sodium Na2SO4. Okay, so here's five examples. Try them on your own. Pause the video and then... Come back when you've got them all done and see how you did. I'm going to write out, I'm going to pause for a second to give you a chance to pause it, and then I'm going to write out the solutions. Okay, so now that you have your answers, let's figure this out. Of course, this first one is double replacement. So my magnesium and my iron are going to switch. Fe. Now, in this case, I don't have to guess at what the charge on the Fe is because I see the three. So I know it's going to be Fe3. So I'm going to get Fe. OH with MgNO3, okay? Fe has a plus three charge. Hydroxide is a minus one, so it should be FeOH3. Mg is a plus two charge. Nitrate has a minus one charge, so MgNO3, two. Second one, Li li lithium plus nitrogen. Uh, two single substances combat together. Composition reaction, which means I should get one compound, Li. N. Now, this one is a little bit trickier because people forget that nitrogen has a charge. Nitrogen has a charge of minus 3. Lithium has a charge of plus 1. My 3 comes down and becomes Li3N. C4H10 plus O2. Oh, plus O2. Warning light. Anytime I see a plus O2, I automatically think 
combustion. Are all plus O2s combustion? No. Are most? Yes. In this case, C4H10 is a hydrocarbon, so this is therefore a hydrocarbon combustion. So I know all hydrocarbon combustions are CO2 and H2O. That's it. Done. Don't have to do anything more with it. Okay. Fourth one, copper plus silver nitrate. Yep, single thing plus a compound. Again, single replacement. Copper is plus. Ag is plus. They are going to switch. CuNO3 plus Ag. Copper is plus 2. Nitrate is minus 1. It's going to work out like this. Last one, zinc plus HCl. So, again, single replacement. Zn with the Cl plus H2. And, of course, H2 is diatomic. That's right. So, therefore, it's going to have H2 on the end. Okay? Not just H. Don't forget that. Okay. Ready for something harder? Yay! Okay. Write the following reactions as formulas, identify the type, and balance it. Okay, so I'm going to let you go through this. Hopefully, just pause it. You should be able to do everything we've done so far. This is a culmination. You should be able to do these. I'm going to pause, let you pause the video, write out your answer, and see if yours matches mine. Ready? Go. Okay, welcome back. Iron 3 chloride, FeCl3. Plus calcium sulfate, CaSO4, yields. Okay. What type of reaction is this? Compound plus compound is double replacement. So switch my first things. FeSO4 plus CaCl. Balance the charges. Iron is plus 3. Tells me that right there. Sulfate is minus 2. So it's going to be... Fe2SO43, cross out the charge. Calcium is plus 2, chlorine is minus 1, CaCl2. Balance it. Draw my little line. Now, hopefully, you get to the point where you don't have to draw this little line anymore. Like when I do this, I don't even do the little line. I can compare them left to right. You had better be drawing the line until you get good at this. Notice I kept my sulfate together. Why did I do that? Same reason as I did before. Sulfate doesn't change from the left to the right. So therefore, I can keep it together. Had the sulfur and the oxygen split apart, I would have to separate this out. So, one iron, three chlorines, one calcium, one sulfate. Two irons, two chlorines, one calcium, three sulfates. Well, my recommendation is start with the non-metals, which means chlorine. I don't know why, it's just easier. So I look up here, I've got three, I've got two. Common denominator, many times works. This makes this six chlorines, three calciums. Two over here, uh, six chlorines, six chlorines and two irons. Oh, look at that, my iron's balanced out for me. Outstanding. So let's work on those calciums. Well, I've got three calciums over here. Let's put a three. That gives me three calciums, and it messes up my sulfates. Hey, bada bing, you're all done. Okay, and I've done everything. Now, when you get, be prepared on the test. This is the type of question I'm going to give you. I asked you to do three things. Write the following reaction as formulas. Check. Identify the type. Check. Balance it. Check. Without a doubt, there's going to be half of you who forget to do something. Make sure you do everything I ask of you. Now, let's take it to the AP level. This is the type of question you're going to see on, the AP, on an AP test. It says sodium metal is added to water. That's all they give you. Now you have to write out the reaction. So, so I chose this one specifically because we've actually already done this example. Sodium is Na. Water is H2O. Okay. Yields. Type of reaction? Single replacement. Well, it is... Um, but it's a little weird. This is called a metal plus water. Now, water is tricky. Water likes to act as HOH. So when it's single replacement, the sodium doesn't replace all of the hydrogens. It only replaces this hydrogen out in front, which means you're going to get Na combining with the OH and H by itself. 
Okay, again, the reason that happens because hydro uh, water likes to act as H. OH. So since it likes to react as two different parts, we treat it like two different parts, and the sodium is going to bump out that H, which is the positive, and it's going to combine with the OH, which is the negative. Obviously, my sodium is plus one, my hydroxide is minus one, they balance already, and hydrogen is diatomic, so it's two. Okay? Identify the type, single replacement, and of course, we have to balance it. So I draw my little line, NA. N A H H O O one one uh, two three one one. I've done this before, so I'm going to go through this really fast. If you don't understand what I just did, there's I, I did this basic metal plus water twice already in this whole thing, so you can go back and look at any of those examples. Okay, solution of tin chloride is added to a solution of iron three sulfate. Okay, tin two chloride, SnCl two plus FeSO four three yields. Type of reaction: double double replacement. Okay, so tin and iron are going to replace each other just like they did, just like the other example we did. So I've got tin sulfate plus FeCl3. I'm just going to balance this real fast. Put a three here, put a three here, put a two here, and I'm done. 